Hello travelers, Boardman21 here, and today I got a 1 to 75 marksman for you. This one's going to be based around going from the rogue class to the marksman class. You'll be using flurry and multi-shot, and I'll be setting you up to build the bow mage. Now with this, we farmed the bow mage the ra on the Age of Winter timeline. We farmed the Reign of Winter bow on that timeline, on our first character, on that VK auto bomber that we did, setting this character up so that as soon as we hit 70, we could transition over. In this video, you'll find timestamps for all the times I put points into things, and at the level 70 time stamp, I will show you exactly how to transition, exactly what I unspec from passives and from skills as we equip that bow and go from a added bow physical damage build into a spell cold build. That way you'll have a very easy time transitioning over and leveling up to that point and then leveling after will become even faster. As you can see in the gameplay, you begin to just annihilate everything. Again, this will be set up just like all the other leveling guides, broken down at specific points where I've saved up my points to show you where I put them all at once. Overall, this build did quite well. We were able to go through the campaign quite quickly. It came together quite well, and there was never that point where we got stuck and felt like our damage was absolutely horrid. In the beginning, the single target can always feel a little bit bad. If you want, you can use Cinder Strike. We used Puncture every now and then as a zero mana costing skill because we had Flurry procking the multi-strike making it cost 20 mana per second so we ran out of mana pretty quick but as soon as you take the giant slayer node inside of multi-strike you tend to go through single targets quite well and puncture is great for rounding enemies up and straight shooting because it pierces all the way through them again you can use cinder strike as well if you want the setup on this though, we went with Flurry, procking Multi-Strike right off the bat, and Puncture just for a zero costing skill to be able to do damage if we were out of mana. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, Travelers, we are already level 4. We got 11% Void Resist, 9% Physical, and again, this is going to be in regular softcore, so we're going to have access to a lot of our items. And again, this is the second character made, so this will go a little bit faster for us than the first character that we made. However... Like I have shown you, if you do the first character, you can farm all the stuff you need so you can level alts really fast like this. For skills, our first skill is going to go ahead and be Flurry right off the bat. We got one point for it. We're going to put that one point in Alacrity. The first thing we're going to do is get to Multi-Strike as fast as we can so that we can channel it, do a ton of damage. Then we'll get into the mana and then we'll do attack speed last. For passives, we've already got ourselves two passive points and we're going to throw both of them into swift assassins we have more physical damage and attack speed and we're going to be capping that out first and then for the inventory so you can see what items we have some great leveling uniques we have the falcon we have an arboral circuit so there's a chance for that illusionary tree which takes the taunt for like three screens away which is really nice and then we're just doing with as much added bow physical damage as we can get on everything and then just some resist and health so that your survivability will be quite high and that's it for our level 4 update. See you guys at level 8. Alright, we are now at level 8, and we are still working on our resistance. We got our physical and void. That's going to be the first things that we're working towards, so if you have any of those affixes, make sure that you're putting those on. We got about 12% armor, 12% dodge. Dodge will be something that we're building into. For skills, we got 3 more points for flurry. We're going to put 2 more points in alacrity for that attack speed, and then 1 point in boundless blows, so that we can now channel it. Then we have our second skill specialization slot that has opened up, and we're going to go with shift. 
And for shift, we're going to be using this for getting our mana back. We're going to be invulnerable. We're going to have it proc shurikens so that we can have shurikens giving us armor. But the very first point is going to go into shadow recuperation, and then we'll work down to swift recovery. For passives, we've got five more points. All five of them are going into swift assassin for that attack speed and physical damage increase. And then in our inventory, all the same stuff that we had on originally. We haven't found a better bow or anything else yet, but we'll be upgrading this as time goes on. And we can actually wear the Viper Tail now, so if you have a Viper Tail, definitely recommend it. The move speed, the dodge rating, all of it is really nice. And that will be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 12 when we do the next one. All right, travelers, we are now level 13, and as you can see, we're starting to get some elemental resist. Most of that's from the Avarice unique that we put on. We have some physical resist. We're building up our void resist. We have a little bit of dodge thanks to some of the uniques that we farmed on the other character that we put onto this one. And then for skills, we got one more point for flurry. We're going to go ahead and start specking into blood reverie. We want some leech. We want some leech back because we don't really have a lot of health regen and you want to depend on just dodge because when you do get hit, your health is going to go down. So one point there. And then for shift, we got three points. We're going to put one more in shadow recuperation for that healing when we shift. And then two points in swift recovery so that when we use it, we get some of that mana back. So it's not as mana expensive. Essentially, since Fury, uh, Flurry is going to be consuming some of our mana. So we will have some mana issues if we're constantly shifting and using Flurry together. For passives, we got six more points. We're going to cap out the Swift Assassin for that attack speed, that physical damage increase. And then you can build into decks and health if you want. This will give you some extra dodge. This will give you more health. But for me, I'm going to start building into the Poison Resist and the dodge rating as this will be very beneficial for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and put five points there and then we'll be building into evasion and into the agility so we can go very, very fast and get extra damage based on how fast we're going. For our inventory, again, some of these uniques are very common uniques. We farmed them on the other character, which I told you is what we were going to do. And now this is going to allow us to level really, really fast. This one is from the quest you get in the beginning, but the other three very common items that we had fall. We have the Aberral Circuit for the extra move speed and the Illusionary Tree, which can taunt the enemy so we don't get attacked. Viper Tail, which is really nice for the extra dodge rating and the poison and slow on hit. And the Falcon, which isn't you know incredibly useful, but it gives us move speed and dodge rating, which gets us going we'll probably take it off by level 20 when we find a better chest the rest of these i'll just hover over but the build planner will be in the description below
All right, travelers, we are now level 20, just about to take on the fire dragon. I've got almost 300 health. We've got our void resist almost capped. We're working on our physical right now. We have some elemental, we have some poison, and then necrotic, of course. We don't really have to worry about till chapter 4, but we're going to start getting some of that as well. We've got about 14% dodge, 13% armor. Armor is not something we're super building into, but we will get some extra thanks to shurikens, and dodge is something we will build into, but probably not till towards the end of the campaign or into the end game system, the model of the fate. For skills, we got three more points. We're going to put two points in Pavais and one point in Fuel Salad. Don't know if I said that right, but either way, this will now proc multi-shot on every fourth arrow. It does increase the channel cost to 20 from 5, so you will run out of mana really quick. However, don't worry about that at the moment. Later, we will be getting mana back on hit. But for now, it's going to take a lot of your mana, so you do want to have something else to use in case you run out. You can have Puncture or something else, or just kind of you know keep moving around and just use it when you need to. On the other version of this, you don't have access to multi-shot yet, but it will use the default skill for it. And then once we actually unlock multi-shot and build into it, it's going to use the skill tree for multi-shot. So you kind of get early access to multi-shot by doing this, because we won't be able to get it till at least level 25. We got three points for shift. We're going to go ahead and throw those three points into sleight of hand. And the reason for this is we're going to have shurikens actually be procced every time that we shift. And our third skill specialization will be shurikens. And what we're going to be building into is getting that additional increased armor for every shuriken that is spinning around us. So we're going to go ahead and use the first four points. We're going to put three in alacrity and then one in thin shurikens. And it won't be until we get the one point blade shield that they'll actually be cast around us last for a duration and therefore give us the 10% armor per shuriken that we have spinning around us. For passives, we have nine more points. I'm gonna go ahead and throw five of them into invasion. This is going to give us less damage taken while we're moving, which we're gonna be doing a lot because we're only gonna have enough mana to stand still and channel flurry for a couple of seconds. This gives us increased dodge rating. And then we're gonna go ahead and put four points into agility so that we have haste on hit chance and we have increased movement speed or increased damage based on our movement speed. And when you have haste, obviously it's gonna give you more damage as well. So four points there. And then for our inventory, nothing's really changed here. We did take off the Falcon chest. We already replaced it with something very basic with some resistances. And again, that's really all we're going for right now, a weapon with as much flat physical damage as you can get and everything else just for defense. And that'll be for it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 25 when we choose the mastery. All right, travelers, we are now level 24, and we have been working on a resistance. We've got some physical still, almost capped the void, still got about the same amount of elemental, same armor, same dodge, and we're going to continue to start working into necrotic as now we're going to go into chapter 4, and necrotic is very important to have as most mobs will be hitting you with both necrotic and physical damage. So capping out the necrotic and physical is something that you definitely want to work towards. For skills... Before we get into it, I did take one passive point out. I unspecced it from the Guile, and the reason for that is we need five points in the Marksman, and I didn't hit level 25 yet, and we want to unlock multi-shot. So we're going to choose our mastery now. We're going to be the Marksman. This is going to give us 5% increased attack speed with bow attacks, and we'll get a stack 
when we do that, and it's going to allow us to have a lot of extra attack speed, and we'll have 50% increased bow damage while using a bow, which is basically the only thing that you will do with a marksman. This also unlocks detonating arrow, so we're going to choose that. Then for skills, because of the fact that we only have three skill specializations, I'm going to go ahead and unspec the shurikens, and we're going to throw multi-strike into that. But in order to do that, we are going to go to the passives first. We're going to go to marksman. we got to place that five points in here to actually unlock it. And the first five points that we're going to put in here is going to go into Assassin's Quiver, and that's for the bow physical damage and that increased critical strike chance. So we're going to put five points right there. That'll increase our damage and give us a higher chance to crit, which will do even more damage. So then for skills, we'll go ahead and throw a multi-shot in there. The first four points, we're going to go two in quick draw and two in true strikes. And we're really working towards getting to Giant Slayer as fast as possible. Now, you're probably looking at that and going, it's got negative 80% damage. Why would I want that? It's because you already are going to one-shot trash mobs when you're using this. This is so that you can hit bosses with all of your targets at once. And because you have more than five projectiles, you actually end up doing a lot more damage. And because they can all hit the same target, you can apply ailments, you can apply shreds, you can apply like armor shred and frailty and chill and all that in a single hit. And it allows you to do even more damage much quicker. And then as we build into the Reign of Winter later, it'll be just more projectiles hitting things, which allows for more icicles to proc. We got two points in shift. Both of these points are going, or one point will go in swift recovery for that mana gain back, and then one point in shadow slip so that we can be invulnerable while shifting. And then one point in flurry. We really want to start getting to that mana back on hit so that we're not losing all of our mana so quick. So one more point in blood reverie, and then we're going to put our next two points up here to start getting that mana back. For our inventory, nothing has really changed here. Everything's the exact same as it was at level 20. I did end up finding a second orbital circuit, so we do have 2% more movement speed. It dropped a little bit better than the previous one, but the build pointer will be in the written guide, which is in the description below. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 35. All right, travelers, we are level 29 and going to do an update. And this is just so that the build will feel better as you're leveling through. We're going to go ahead and get Giant Slayer. We're going to get mana back on Flurry. And at level 29, we can do that. So, so far, we've got about 370 health. We're still working on our resistance. We got some Necrotic now. We upped our physical a little bit. And we have about the same amount of armor and dodge that we've had the whole time. For skills, we got two more points for Flurry. We want to put one point in second win so that we gain health every time that we hit at least one enemy and then we also put one point in sap willpower so we gain back one mana for every hit when we are channeling this as long as we hit an enemy with it we got one point for shift the one point is going to go into swift recovery so we get that mana back when we use it and then for multi-shot we have four points two of which are going to go in large quiver this gives us extra arrows one point in giant slayer so they can now all hit the same target 
and then one point in back to back and we're going to end up putting two points in repeater bow so that as it's proc there will be a chance for it every fourth proc so how it will work is you're channeling flurry every fourth arrow will be multi-shot and then every fourth multi-shot will actually double cast so you're getting a double proc on a proc from a skill as you will and then for passives we have six more points they're all going to go into marksman and we're going to go ahead and throw five of them into draining arrows and attack speed does indeed give flurry even though it's channeled faster attack speed it's not going to scale exactly the same but it does increase it so we're going to put five points in draining arrows and then one point in wound maker and we're going to cap this out pretty quick and the reason for that is that critical vulnerability chance we do so many hits that as long as you get to like 30 or 40 percent with this you're going to apply so many stacks of critical vulnerability that within like the first few seconds of attacking a rare or boss or even sooner than that you're going to have 100 percent crit which is going to make you take out bosses and rares much much faster then for inventory we still have the same uniques on, same gear. The only thing we changed is we upgraded the bow. We now have a higher base with that 24 physical damage. It's got some leech on it. And then we put critical strike multiplier and bow physical damage added on it, along with that tier one chill and slow. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 35 for the next one. All right, travelers, we are now level 35. We've got just over 400 health. We're still working on getting our resistance up. We could definitely use some more physical and elemental and necrotic at this point. Got about 11% dodge, 10% armor, and for our damage, we're doing physical damage. So you can see right there, we got about 100% physical damage. The crit multi is still the same, even though we are able to get to 100% crit chance against enemies that have enough health for us to do a ton of hits thanks to that critical strike and vulnerability. Armor Shred will also be one of your favorite tools for being able to do more damage. For skills, we got one more point for Flurry. It's going to go into Sap Willpower for that extra mana back. Two points for Shift, both of them going to Sleight of Hand. Then we got three points for Multi Shot. One point will go and hang, hang loose. And then two points will go in Point Blink, so we'll deal 50% more damage when we are close to targets. You will deal less damage if you're really far away, but for us, we're going to stick to being right in the face of enemies with it, so that's what we're going for. And then for our next seal to specialize, we're going to go back to shurikens. We got five points. Three of them will go in Alacrity. One point will go in Thin Shurikens. And then one point in Blade Shield. So now when we shift, we're going to have our five shurikens spinning around us just thanks to the shift being able to proc them. And then we'll build into getting additional armor per one of those. So we'll be able to get to 150% increased armor, which is huge for your defense early on. And as you can see right now, if I were to use it, we have only, you know, 10% armor. I don't have that 10% increase, but when we shift, you can see we have the five shurikens. So that's going to give us a huge boost to that armor. Right now, if we had 150% increase, it would bump us up to about 150 armor, and we get an extra about 8 9% damage reduction, which would be nice. Then for passives, if I hit the right button, for passives, we have nine more passives, and we got four points going in Wound Maker. And then we're going to go ahead and put five points in concentration for that increased damage as long as we haven't been hit, as long as we have that concentration buff up. And this critical strike vulnerability, 50% is about all you need. You won't need to get any more than that as you're going to be able to crit really, really quick. And we'll be building into a bit more crit as we get higher level for basically free. And then for items, nothing's really changed. We did upgrade our bow once again just to a little bit more bow damage. It has bow critical strike chance, and then it has added bow physical damage on it. Everything else is still the same, and the build pointer, of course, will still be in the description.
Travelers, we are now level 43. We've got just over 600 health. We are in Chapter 7. We are just past Heobori, about to take on the Matriarch down south. And for our resistance, we are trying to get our elementals up quite a bit, but we are struggling a little bit. We could really use some more cold and physical right now, so make sure if you have some of that, try and get it up as high as you can. Got about 11% dodge and 17% armor. And then for our damages, we have grown the damages up quite a bit. We've got 200% bow damage along with 172% physical damage, and our critical strike multiplier is still the same. For skills, we got two more points for flurry. We're going to go ahead and start building into more attack speed for it. So we're going to put two points into Relentless. If you uh, are having trouble surviving and you really want more health on hit, you can put more points into Second Wind. For Shift, we got two more points. Now that we have finally capped down to the Sleight of Hand, we're going to go ahead and start giving ourselves haste every time that we do it, so two points in Momentum. We have three points for Multi-Strike. We're going to cap out that point blank for another 25% more damage against nearby enemies or very close enemies that you're close to. We're going to put one point in Efficient Draw and then one point in Strong Pull for that 55% more hit damage. It reduces the attack speed, but we're not actually manually attacking with Multi-Shot, so the attack speed doesn't affect us at all. Just the damage increase is nice, so it's a single benefit. For Shurikens, we have seven more points. We're going to cap out the Bladed Armor so that we get that 30% armor per Shuriken that's spinning. We'll have five of them around us, and then four points in Ithril Blades so they have 100% pierce chance so they'll last the full duration. They won't disappear as soon as they hit an enemy for passives. We got 11 more points. We're going to go ahead and put five points in Heightened Senses so that we get that Bow Critical Strike Multiplier, and we also get the Critical Strike Avoidance, which is really nice. We'll hit a little harder and we'll be a little bit tougher. We're going to put five points in Thief's Quiver. This is going to give us more health, and it will also give us 2.5% of the bow damage we're dealing as health, which is really nice as well. And one point in Sniper's Gambit. This will be the next thing that we cap out. This is going to give us a ton more flat bow physical damage, so we do even more damage. And then for our inventory, not much has changed. We got rid of the Viper Tail finally and put it on for some mana regen along with a little bit of hybrid health and some fire resist. And then we changed our bow up to the Northern Bow, which you can start wearing at level 43. We put flat damage on this, increased bow damage, and then it also has bleed and poison on hit. And that's it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 50 when we open up our fifth specialization skill.
Alright, travelers, we are now level 50, just about to take on Lilith and Lagon. We have just over 700 health. We're still working on our resistance. We have a little bit of everything. We're higher on the elementals. We could really use some more physical, but we'll continue to work on that as we get into chapter 9 or into the monolith. Got about 16% armor, 11% dodge, and our damage is still about the same with that 200% bow damage and the 200% physical damage increase. And for defense, we do have some critical strike chance. We have some on one of our items, and then we also got 35% from the passive tree, which is really nice. So that's really helped our defense, and we have a little bit more 4% extra endurance. For skills, we're putting one more point into Flurry. We're going to start building into that Adrenaline Rush, so one point there. For Shift, we got one more point. We're going to cap out the maximum amount of time that we can have of Haste when we use it, so one more point in Momentum. For multi-shot, one more point. Since we already have slow on our weapon and we can apply slow with other things, we're going to go with points into pending shot. So we'll do another more damage modifier. This will end up getting 60% total once we put all three points in there against enemies that have slow applied to them. And then for shurikens, three points in abrasive arsenal. This is going to make each one of those hits with the shurikens do physical res shred, which is going to be nice because it means we'll do more damage with our physical skills being flurry. And then for our next skill, we're going to specialize into smoke bomb. We're going to use it for leech. You can use it for crit chance, although we already have the critical strike vulnerability, so you don't have to build into that right away. You can build into the armor shred, which is something else that we'll build into with it. And we also want to use it for the dodge chance and the glancing blow chance that you can get with the dust routes, as that'll make us very, very tanky having that glancing blow and extra dodge. So the first point, we're going to put one in Shrouded in Darkness, then four points in Rapid Concealment, and then the last two, we're going to go into Lingering Fumes. We want it to last as long as possible. After we max that out, we'll build into the Slow and Armor Shred, and then we'll build into the uh, Bow Critical Strike Chance, if you want that. You don't have to. For Passives, we got seven more points. We're going to cap out the Sniper's Gambit. And then we're going to place our last two points in Ethereal Arrows, as this gives us increased mana, more mana regen, and then bow mana cost will actually increase your damage that you do, but we also want to unlock the Master Archer as we'll get additional multi-shot arrows once we put a couple points in there. That's really going to increase the amount of damage that we're doing. And then for items, nothing's changed really. We are just about to put on this bow here since it's level 50. I just want to get slow on hit put on it, so we're going to do that. And once we have slow on it so that we can make sure we get that 20% extra damage for multi-shot, we're going to go ahead and swap it on. The longbow is the highest base physical damage that you can get and in in the entire game with that 60 bow physical damage. So we're going to be using that for a while until we can wear the multi-shot bow and then we'll use Reign of Winter last. And that's it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 55. <laughs>
All right, travelers, we are now level 55. We've got 750 health. We've kept on our physical. We're working on our elementals, getting those close. We're doing some of the model of the fate before we finish out chapter 9. We got about halfway through it before it was just becoming increasingly difficult. I want to cap out the poison resist before we go back and cap out my critical strike avoidance. Right now we have that 62% critical strike avoidance. We need another tier 5 affix and a couple of percent probably on something, so maybe another tier 1 in the meantime. And then our damage is all about the same as it has been. For skills, we got one more point for Flurry. We're going to go ahead and throw another point into the Adrenaline Rush. For Shift, one more point. We're going to go ahead and start building into the Elusive so that we get that dodge rating after we shift for a second. And then we have Multi-Strike, another point into Pending Shots. One more point into a brace of arsenal for shurikens for some more of our physical shred. And we have eight points for smoke bomb. We're going to cap out that lingering fume so we have the full duration. Then one point in thick smoke and cap out the eroding fumes for all those armor shred stacks when we use it. For passives, we got six passive points. We're going to cap out the thief squibber so we get more health and we have more bow damage leached its health. And then one point in meditation. And then the next update, we're going to get those additional arrows, and that's really going to improve the amount of damage that we are doing. For items, nothing's changed. The only unique that we still have on is the Arboral Circuit, and that's just for now until we find a better ring. But when we get a ring that's got the uh, resistances that we need and it's got some critical strike chance or some decks on it, we're going to go ahead and swap that out. But right now, the tree kind of saves us every now and then. Everything else is just normal things that you would get at this point, move speed and defense. And then on the bow... We're still wearing the longbow. As soon as we hit level 64, we'll be able to use the multi-shot bow, and then at 70, we'll finally put on the Reign of Winter. And that's it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 65. Alright travelers, I am now level 66, I am one level above the normal thing, but you can do this at level 65, we haven't gained anything extra. We have just under 900 health, we're still working on our resistance, we've capped out the physical, we really need to get some void up there, and I really need to finish off the elemental, but we're still working on that for the gear. For armor, we got about that 16%, 12% dodge, would like to build into some more dodge, and then our damage is still about the same, but we are now above level 64, so I'm using Drakar's Compass, the unique bow, to really get most damage out of that. For skills, we got two more points for Flurry. I'm just going to continue to build into the attack speed that we want, so I'm going to put 
two points in an exhaustible, so that we have increased duration of that adrenaline rush for shift. We got two more points, going to continue to put into elusive, so we get more dodge rating per point of dex that we have for one second after we have shifted for multi strike. I got two more points. We're going to cap out the pinning shots for that another 20% uh, extra damage or more damage to slow targets, and then we're going to put one point in repeater bows to reduce that amount of times that multi-shot has to proc from eight down to six and then we'll put one more point in here later to reduce it down to four for shurikens we got two more points we're going to go ahead and increase the duration that they'll continue to spend around us and then for smoke bomb we have three points and i'm just going to increase the starting area so we can kind of move around a little bit because it'll be a bigger area for us to work in and for passives, we have 11 passive points. We're going to start out in the Marksman. We're going to go ahead and cap out the draining arrows that we had. That's going to give us more attack speed. We're going to get more health when we use it. We're going to put the two points in Master Archer so that we now have four additional multi-shot arrows. That's going to allow us to do a lot more damage. That leaves us with six points. We're going to go back to the base class, and with those six points, we're going to max out the agility, so we have a higher chance for haste on hit, and we have increased damage based on our movement speed. We're going to cap out the guile. That's going to give us more poison resist, more dodge rating, and the last point in steady hand for that dexterity and health. And then for items, like I said, the only unique we have is Drucker's Compass. That's going to be the multi-shot bow. Uh, we got this yesterday on our first character that we made. Just leveling, just doing echoes, eventually it's going to drop for you. If you don't have it, just a regular bow. The bow we were using is this one right here. It was a long bow. It had increased bow damage. It had chill and slow on hit. That slow on hit is very important for the multi-shot damage right now. Again, at level 70, we're going to be using the Reign of Winter, so we'll switch it there. And that's it. I will see you guys at level 75 for the final update.
Hello, travelers. We are now level 70, which means that we can wear the Reign of Winter, so I'm breaking this down to show you exactly how I'm transitioning from the physical added bow damage build that's doing or doing bow and physical damage into doing spell cold damage with the Icicle Reign of Winter. So for the character sheet, we're sitting at about 900 health. We've got most of our resistances capped or quite high at this point. Void is the one we're lacking the most of. We've got 16% dodge and armor. We're still building into those quite a bit. And then at this point, I'm going to unspec some things because we are going to change some things. So as you know, when you switch over to this bow, it's based off spell cold damage. And all you want to do is get as many hits with bow attacks as possible so that you can proc the icicles, which will scale with spell damage and with cold damage. So we're no longer stacking any of our initial damage that we we're doing, like added bow physical damage or physical damage. We're actually switching away from that. And you can actually get out of the idols if you had increased damage per arrow with multi-shot. You don't want those anymore because multi-shot's not what's going to be doing the damage. It's going to be purely the icicles. Hello. So we're going to respect some passives. The passives that we don't want anymore is the sniper's gambit. The reason we don't want these is we don't want to take that increased damage from nearby enemies because we don't care about bow physical damage anymore. So we're going to get rid of these six. And then we had four that we were going to respect as well. And because we'll have to trade these around, I'm going to go ahead and put the points in dexterity. Once we get the morning frost boots, that dex is going to be actually straight up added damage. So we're going to put eight points down there and take these ones out. Hello, traveler. Just like this. So we leave us with two extra points. We'll start building into the Blade Dancer. We're going to end up putting eight points in the Cloak of Shadows for that dex there as well. And the Glancing Blow Chance, which is always going to help our defense for skills. We're also going to do some respecking here. Multi-Shot is going to get some respec. We're going to be removing the three points in slow because we no longer care about the hit damage of Multi-Shot. What we want it to do is to be able to hit the same enemy with all projectiles so that an enemy can be hit 20 times and that can proc you know, up to 20 icicles if every one of them proc'd one. We want pierce now. Pierce is very important because it can mean you can do additional hits, which means more icicles. We no longer want this hit damage up here because we don't care about that, but armor shred is very important because armor shred will allow the icicles to hit more. So we'll be putting points into piercing shots and bodkin points instead of strong pull and instead of pinning shots. That's the only thing we're going to change at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and throw these points in. We have one more point for Flurry. We're going to go ahead and throw it into Inexhaustible for Shift. One more point going into Elusive for Multi-Shot. We're going to go ahead and start specking into that Piercing Shots with one point there. For Shurikens, we're going to throw another point in here, and it's going to go into that Duration as we continue to max out the Floating Blades. And for Smoke Bomb, one more point into that Starting Area in Generosity already done the passives and then for gear all the gears basically the same we're just building into defense we did get the 100 percent critical strike avoidance at this point we do need to build into endurance you can start switching your idols over to things that say like increased damage if you're wielding a bow that's going to give you cold damage increase and spell damage increase which will make icicles do more damage and again the reign of winter and if you're looking for this it drops in the heroic timeline and they're in the age of winter timeline from heroic the boss there's a 50 percent drop it does not have to be empowered. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 75.
All right, travelers, we are now level 75 with the Marksman Bow Mage. And with this, we have just over 1,200 life. We have made it all the way to the Lagan timeline. We have enough stability to do Lagan, but we haven't done it yet. We will later. We have all of our elemental resists capped. Most of that is coming from the idols. We pretty much switched the idols over to all resistance. And we'll probably switch that out as we find better resist on gear and when we find increased bow damage or increased damage while wearing a bow for the idols. We don't have any of those yet, but that will increase the damage that we're doing with the icicles. We got about 20% dodge, some armor, damage is all still about the same, but right now we're really wanting to scale that spell damage and cold damage. So we got 150% of that and 150 of the cold. For defense, we are capped on critical strike avoidance. We still need to work on the endurance. For skills, we had one more point for flurry. We went ahead and put it in to the inexhaustible. For shift, we went ahead and put it into elusive. We have seven points for multi shot because we unspect a bunch of stuff. We unspect the pinning shots, we unspect the strong pull. And what we want now is we want the armor shred, we want the pierce, we want the double attack. So we're gonna go ahead and throw one point in the repeater boat. We're gonna throw two more in the piercing shots, and then we're gonna go ahead and throw four points into the bodkin points to get that armor shred effect so the icicles can hit your enemy for more damage. And then for shurikens, that last point that we put in, still going into the duration, and for smoke bomb, we're going to continue on with the starting area. For passives, we have five more points. I'm going to throw these all in the blade dancer. All five will go in cloak of shadows for that dexterity and the glancing blow chance. That glancing blow will give us, you know, 35% damage reduction when it actually activates, and then that increased dex once we find the morning frost boots, which will be the next thing we're hunting for, is going to allow us to do a lot more damage based on how much dex that we have. And then for gear, the only unique, of course, is that rain of winter. Everything else is the exact same. We still have some items that don't even have four fixes, so we're still definitely looking for some better gear, but that is where we stand. All right, that's it for this leveling guide, and I will see you guys for the next one, which will be the Lich.